on to the next uh, well video here. Part 284C3M1B5. And it's line 22F1FA 19C3M1B5 triangular wave hydrogen Roswell atomic symbols 1947 UFO well study. So there's the alien radio signal there. So this has research and formula ideas for communications from deep space to Earth from a UFO in 1947. Roswell UFO glyphics are found on a spaceship. Same symbols are found on Earth. Okay, so that's what this video is about. So I'm going to Google RF generator. And it says, quotes from Wiki, signal generators, also known as function generators, RF and microwave signal generators, pitch generators, arbitrary waveform generators, and digital pattern generators or a frequency. Generators are electronic devices that generate repeating or non-repeating signals in either the analog or digital domains. They are generally used in designing, testing, troubleshooting, and repairing electronic or electroacoustic devices, so they have often have artistic uses as well. A function generator is a device which produces simple repetitive waveforms. Such devices contain an electronic oscillator, a circuit that is capable of creating a repetitive waveform. Modern devices use digital signal processing to synthesize waveforms followed by a digital analog converter, DAC, to produce an analog output. The most common waveform is a sine wave, but sawtooth, step pulse, square and triangular waveform oscillators are commonly available and arbitrary waveform generators, AWGS. If the oscillator operates above the audio frequency of over 20 kilohertz, the generator will often include some sort of modulation function, which is at, such as amplitude modulation, frequency modulation, or phase modulation, as well as a second oscillator that provides an audio frequency modulation waveform. Sorry. November 23rd, 2012 when I was working on this. Today is November 24th. The keyword is triangular waveform oscillators. I'm going to Google AWGS, arbitrary waveform generators, and this is what came up. So this is a band limited triangle wave picture in the time domain top and frequency domain in the bottom. The fundamental is at 220 hertz, A3. That's from Wikipedia. A triangle wave is a non synodal waveform named for its triangular shape. It is a periodic piecewise linear continuous real function. Like a square wave, the triangle wave contains only odd harmonics. However, the higher harmonics roll off much faster than in a square wave, proportional to the inverse square of the harmonic number as opposed to just the inverse. November 23rd, my thoughts. Using the triangle wave with the well alien radio signal data, what kind of wave did the well signal use to reach Earth? I wonder if there, there's a way to go backwards from the signal and see if it's a triangle shaped wave. So I'm going to Google triangle wave. Wow, ha, new inventions come up. Quote Data diagrams are found on blog. Triangular wave generator from October 2012. So this is brand new. Here is a circuit of triangular wave generator which generated triangular wave with maximum peak level Vmax and minimum peak level Vmin. In order to overcome the limitation of changing frequency with changing frequency with the change in the value of generated waves. There's a diagram of the circuit. Circuit descriptions. This whole circuit is built around a quad operational amplifier ICTL048, IC2, and analog multiplexer ICCD4053. IC1 is separated as A1, A2, A3, and A4, functioning as different differential amplifier inter integrator buffer, amplifier, and comparator, respectively. The two reference voltage is given from analog multiplexer is given to differential amplifier A1. The output voltage V1 equals Vmax minus Vmin from A1 is given to A2 for integration. When the integrated output of A2 having positive slope it exceeds the level Vmax and the comparator output, output from A4 goes negative. Similarly, when the integrated output of A2 having negative slope compared to output, output from A4 goes positive. The blog writer is Christian Keshe Chandri 
from Dream Lover Technology. His Facebook says Jacinto Mendo. He's got a so I found his contact information there, so you can contact him if you're interested in talking about this triangular wave thing. So November 23rd, my thoughts. Obviously, this triangle wave experiment can be used to boost a telecommunication signal, either with the UFO spaceship or within the spaceship to Earth. I'll bet more things will come up in the next few videos. This always happens while doing research on things. AWGS have the ability to output a pattern of words on a multiple bit connector. Sorry, this is a quote. I should have wrote quote down. That's, uh, so. AWGs have the ability to put a pattern of words on a multiple bit connector to simulate data transmission, combining the properties of both AWGS and digital pattern generators. One feature of the DDS based arbitrary waveform generates, generates is that their digital nature allows multiple channels. To be operated with precisely controlled phase offsets or ratio equated related frequencies. This allows the generation of, of polyphase and sine waves, IQ constellations, or simulation of signals from geared mechanical systems such as jet engines, complex channel channel modulations are also possible. AWGs may also be contained within music synthesizers. So November 23rd, AWGS Music. We all know that music can travel far distances from this concert in a city. Does it travel farther than any of these triangle wave signals? And what makes it travel that far? So I'm going to Google music sound, musical waves travel. And the keyword is sound waves. The speed of sound. A sound wave is a pressure disturbance. It travels through a medium by means of particle-to-particle -particle interaction. As one particle becomes disturbed, it exerts a force on the next adjacent particle thus disturbing that particle from rest and transporting the energy through the medium. Like any wave, the speed of a sound wave refers to how fast the disturbance is passed from particle to particle. Well, frequency refers to the number of vibrations that an individual particle makes per unit of time. Speed refers to the distance and the distance disturbance travels per unit of time. Always be cautious to distinguish between the two often confused quantities of speed, how fast, and frequency, how often. Since the speed of a wave is defined as the distance that a point on a wave, such as a compression or refra refraction, travels per unit of time, it is often expressed in units of meters per second, abbreviated m s. In equation form, this is speed equals distance dash time. The faster a sound wave travels, the more distance it will cover in the same period of time. If a sound wave were observed to travel a distance of 700 meters in two seconds, then the speed of the wave would be 350 m s. A slower wave would be cover less distance, perhaps 660 meters in the same period of two seconds, thus have a speed of 330 ms. Faster waves cover more distance in the same period of time. So that's from the www.physicsclassroom.com. November 23rd, my thoughts. Using a laser beam that collides particles with sound waves, have we created one yet? So I'm going to Google laser beam sound waves. The keyword is microwave. Um, then a data formula comes up, a U.S. patent number 7580533. Um, so we're going to do the laser beam, smoke or vapor, detect sound vibrations, free air, particulate flow detection microphone, laser photocell pair, moving stream, smoke or vapor, laser beam path, sound pressure waves, disturbance in smoke, variations, laser light, reaching photo detector, Prototype demonstrated at 127th Audio Engineering Society Convention, New York City, October 9th to the 12th, 2009. So a microwave microphone comes up. So quotes from Wiki. The technique of using a light beam to remotely record sound probably originated with Leon Thurman in the Soviet Union at Orbis Forum, 1947, when he developed and used the Bernays dropping eavesdropping system. Baran eavesdropping. <laughs> Wait, oh, there we go. This worked by using a low power infrared beam, not a laser, from a distance to detect the sound vibrations in the glass windows. Leventry Bureau, head of the KGB, had used this Baran device to spy on the US, British, and French embassies in Moscow. It has been reported that the National Security Agency makes use of laser microphones. On August 25, 2009, U.S. Patent 7580533 was issued for a device that uses a laser beam and smoke or vapor to detect sound vibrations in free air. 
particulate flow detection microphone based on a laser photocell pair with a moving stream of smoke or vapor in the laser beam's path. Sound pressure waves cause disturbances in the smoke that in turn cause variations in the amount of laser light reaching the photo detector. A prototype of the device was demonstrated at the 127th Audio Engineering Society Convention in New York City from the 9th through 12th October in 2009. So I Google particulate flow detection microphone and there's what it looks like. A red laser beam illuminates the smoke stream passing between the nozzle and the exhaust funnel. Particulate flow detection microphone, the technology disclosed, disclosed is US patent 7580533 is available for licensing. And brief PFD microphone technology is the first working method for creating an audio transducer without a diaphragm, plate, filament, or any other mechanical part that vibrates in response to sound pressure waves. Instead, a thin ribbon of fast-moving smoke or vapor is directly exposed to pressure waves in the air. This ribbon is written on by the pressure waves, creating variations in the density and geometry of the ribbon. A laser beam passing through the smoke or vapor ribbon is modulated by the variations in density and geometry caused by sound pressure waves. These modulations cause a photo detector's voltage output to vary linearly, producing an electrical signal analogous to the sound pressure waves passing through the smoke <laughs> vapor ribbon. Swartz-engineering-design.com November 23rd, hydrogen forms a type of smoke when mixed with water. So I'm going to Google hydrogen forms smoke with water. Quotes, diagrams, and keywords are from various blogs. When hydrogen gas burns, it produces water vapor and high heat. That's from www.hydrogenappliances.com. Electrolysis, splitting water with electricity to produce hydrogen and oxygen. Energy, electricity plus 2H2O is 0O2 plus 2H2. And there's the diagram there. This hydrogen atom meets another hydrogen atom and forms a hydrogen gas molecule, H plus H to H2. And this molecule bubbles to the surface and voila, we have hydrogen gas. 2H2 plus O2 to 2H2O plus energy heat. And it's from www.nmc.org. Then we got a 3D model of a hydrogen bond in water from Quarter via Wikimedia. A uh, quote from a blog, researchers at WF Nanotech announced new power generating fabrics. Reported in the New York Times is one of 32 inventions that will change your life. Researchers at Wake's Forest Nanotech Center have devised a unique way of combining P-doped and N-doped nanotube composites to form essentially a non-woven fabric like a felt. Learn more from the original publication in Nano Letters. So there's the power file, a power producing fabric developed by Nanotech, courtesy of Corey Hewitt, and it's from www.wfu.edu. So November 23rd, my thoughts. Combine this fabric with the hydrogen fuel formulas and steel alloy mixtures mentioned in the wild data, alien technology ideas, and you can have a self-powered UFO spaceship that recharges itself. I'll have to do a cross-reference of the wild alien radial signal data it has several formulas that mention carbon nanotubes in it. Errol's thoughts on the matter. They need to test this material they've made called power felt with the remnants found at the 1947 Roswell, Mexico UFO crash. It has a similar type of material. Break down the materials used in it and whatever is missing you add to make the same material for a spaceship's exterior shell. And there's the picture of the spaceship there. On July 2nd, 1947, an object crash landed on a ranch approximately 75 miles northwest of Roswell, leaving a large field of debris. And that's from www.crystallinks.com. Here's a mirror image of a transcribed glyph as compared to the I-beam in the photo. This was on the actual side of the ship. And it says D-I-U-R-E-T-H-P-H-E-L-E. -E. It says Delta Iota Epsilon Rho Epsilon Theta Phi Epsilon Lamata Epsilon and there's the actual graphs there. So something came to me to look up atomic symbols. Because this is what was on the side of the ship, right? Well, look at these symbols. They look very similar to these here. So September 3rd, 1803, Dalton introduces atomic symbols. A quote from blog. John Dalton devised the first atomic symbols, but they looked a little different from the ones we use today. And that's from Wired.com. And here's some more atomics. This is the elements. 
atomic symbols. And again, some of these look the same as these up here. Quote, various atoms and molecules are de as depicted in John Dalton's A New System of Chemical Philosophy, 1808. This is the English chemist physicist John Dalton. Quote from blog, 1803. Um, John Dalton starts using symbols to represent the atoms of different elements. Dalton, considered the father of modern atomic theory, made a law book entry that day entitled, titled Observations on the Ultimate Particle of Bodies and Their Combinations. It was the first use of symbols to represent the elements of modern chemistry. He soon had a table of 21 elements arranged by atomic mass, which he presented in a scientific paper the following month. Eventually, he had 36 different symbols. In his 1805 work, A New System of Chemical Philosophy, Dalton propounded the tenets of his atomic theory. Number one, the chemical elements are made of atoms. Number two, the atoms of an element are identical in mass. Number three, atoms of different elements have different masses. Four, atoms combine only in small whole number ratios like 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3. Atoms cannot be created or destroyed. Wired.com. November 23rd. So we need to look up the ancient Greek symbols for atoms. The transcribed glyph symbols from the 1947 Roswell UFO look similar to the atom element symbols written <coughs> Sorry, in 1803 by an English chemist physicist named John Dalton. Okay, so thanks for watching. We'll go on to the next video.